Hello, today I have with me Bill Ackman, one of the world's best known investors and the man behind hedge fund Persian Square Holdings, now a FTSE 100 company. Now, um, hello, Bill. Thanks for joining me. Sure. Thanks for having me. And then since we last spoke, Pershing Square Holdings, as, as I mentioned at the start, has become a FTSE 100 company. Uh, now, you told me FTSE 100 inclusion was probably the most significant potential catalyst uh, for Pershing Square. Well, I mean, the shares are up around, I think, 16% in the past five months. Firstly, what's life like among the UK blue chips and, and what's the next significant ca um, catalyst for the shares? Sure. So the discount narrowed quite nicely from you know in the mid 30s to now 24 percent. I still find it extraordinarily wide. I think the next catalyst that people are waiting for for us is an announcement of a transaction for our SPAC. Right. This is this will be a large investment for Pershing. A uh, lot of focus on that entity. Um, for those not familiar with Pershing Square Tontine Holdings, this is a U.S. listed uh, SPAC, four billion of capital from outside investors, a billion minimum commitment from us. And uh, you know, we're targeting a you know, large cap, super high quality, you know, uh, durable growth company. And uh, I just think that transaction, if and when it happens, and I, again, we have a lot of confidence we're, we're going to do something people like, I think will be notable and it will create a lot of value for uh, Purchase Square Holdings uh, because all of the sponsor economics are actually owned by uh, you know, PSH and the two smaller private uh, Pershing uh, funds. And I think it also sets us up to replicate that structure again. And that's you know, an embedded piece of value that I, I don't think uh, is really not reflected in our NAV, our ability to set up these kinds of entities and create valuable sponsor economics for our shareholders. But I think, as I've said, proof is in the pudding, meaning we have to deliver on uh, what we said we were going to do. And I'm, I'm you know, confident we'll do that. Sure. I, I just say for UK, um viewers, uh, SPAC is a special purpose acquisition company, much like the equivalent to a UK cash shell, we might call them over here. So, um, yeah. Um, so, I mean, your portfolio is is made up of, of just 10 stocks. Uh, last year, you used extra cash to top up existing investments like restaurant brands, Lowe's, Hilton and Berkshire Hathaway. Now, what's the strategy in 2021? Are you deliberately looking for new investments? Um, are there any stocks or sectors that particularly excite you at the moment? So uh, we actually sold Starbucks, uh, you know, a month or so ago, and we replaced it with a new investment we haven't yet disclosed. You'll see uh, the beginnings of disclosure of that uh, probably with a filing we'll make in mid-May. Um, and uh, it's an investment that meets all of our kind of criteria, you know, super high quality, durable growth company, simple, predictable, free cash flow generative business. Um, so we're always looking for, you know, great businesses we can own and we're, you know, willing to give up an existing position to replace it with something we think will earn a more attractive return over time. And Starbucks is a great company. Management's done a great job. Uh, we repurchased the stock in the mid fifties. We sold it in the, you know, at approximately double the price, uh, you know, a year later. And, uh, at, you know, the price we sold Starbucks, we thought of it as a, you know, probably a 10%, 10, 11% long-term internal rate of return. And we replaced it with an investment that we think has a, you know, something approximating a 20% long-term IRR. And so we'll make those kinds of changes always. We're always willing to do that. Um, but I think our most significant next investment will be the, uh, an announcement of the SPAC transaction. Right. Okay. So uh, that, that disclosure around the SPAC, watch this space. Yeah. Okay. Uh, now, you mentioned some of them in that question, in that answer. So um, what attributes must a, a stock have to make it into the Pershing Square portfolio? I mean, which is a, a pretty exclusive selection of stocks. It's got to be a business that we can predict what the business will look like over a very long period of time. You know, the, if you believe that the value of a financial asset is the present value of the cash you can take out of the business over its life, in order to build that discounted cash flow model, you've got to put in little numbers in the in the cells, to, if you will. You got to you got to have a view on how revenues are going to grow. You're going to have to have a view on what operating margins are going to be you know, over time. In order to get there, it has to be a business that ha is very has very defensible characteristics. It can't be a business where a couple of students quit university and uh, you know and 
and a year later, they've built a, a disrupting sort of technology. So we're looking for these very, very, what we call durable businesses. You know, Warren Buffett uses the term, you know, business with a moat around it. That's what we're looking for here. Uh, a business that we have a very, very high degree of confidence is going to continue to take share, continue to generate, you know, have attractive margins and will do, you know, well over a very long uh, period of time. You know, so, you know, those are, I think, the most important criteria. And then beyond that, it's price. We want to buy that business at a price which offers us a very attractive return over time. So the Pershing Square um, stock trades at a, a, around a 25% discount to uh, net asset value. Now, that's less than when we last spoke before Christmas, but it is still clearly something you find strange. Now, uh, you know, what are your current thoughts on, on that, Bill? I think it's... It's just a matter of time. You know, when we went public initially, the discount was in the several percentage point range. We, unfortunately, a year or so later, we began a very challenging period for the firm. We lost uh, some investors. Uh, it takes time to bring them back. Uh, you know, we've had three really pretty fantastic uh, consecutive years, um, you know, working on delivering a fourth. Uh, and I think just with consistency, I mean, I think the, you know, in the annual report, the letter I, I compared us uh, you know, one of the measures of a, you know, one of the most important measures of a business is the returns it earns on, on the capital it employs, right? So, for example, an ROE calculation. I said, look, if you looked at the ROE of Pershing Square Holdings, it's been in the almost 40% range for the last three years. And the FTSE 100 as a whole is, is about 8%. The FTSE 100 as a whole, I think, trades in the mid, you know, one and a half-ish times book value. It includes a lot of businesses that are not, I would say, not the highest quality businesses in the world, a lot of degrees of cyclicality, you know, some banks that earn very low returns on capital. And we are about the cheapest stock relative to book value of any company in the index, despite having one of the highest returns on capital of any company in the index. And I just think, you know, it takes time. We're a bit of an unusual animal, uh, you know, and uh, as a result, it takes time for people to understand the story. Uh, but I think, uh, you know, time is the friend of the great business and, and time, I think, leads to recognition of uh, our, our business quality. And I think we'll, you know, we're 1100 basis points better on the discount. I hope the next time we have a conversation, <laughs> <it's>, <laughs> we're 11, I'll, I'll come talk to you every time we, we, we bring the discount in, you know, 1100 basis points. Bill Ackman at Pershing Square Holdings, thanks very much for joining me today. Thank you so much, appreciate it.